Many folks today scoff at citizens following this dumb law, but you have to understand people saw it as their patriotic duty to help this country and people believe the government actually had their best interest at heart. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. In 1933, President Roosevelt banned private gold ownership with Executive Order 6102. 6102 required all persons to deliver on or before May 1st, 1933, all but a small amount of gold coins. During his presidential campaign, FDR promised to lower government spending and taxes, and like every subsequent president, balance the budget. And just like every president, once in office, he did the exact opposite. We were in the midst of the Great Depression, and Roosevelt wanted to stimulate growth by injecting cash into the country. Does this sound familiar? FDR wanted to spend more in an effort to create jobs and increase consumer demand. He raised taxes to fund this jump in spending, but quickly realized that he could not print enough money to pay for all these spending programs. He couldn't print money like they do today because of a pesky little thing called the Federal Reserve Act of 1914. The gold standard limited how much fiat currency our government could print by having it set against our gold reserves. All paper money had to be backed by 40% gold owned by the federal government. In other words, for every dollar printed, the government needed 40 cents of gold in the bank. Having lost all confidence in our economy, people ran to the banks to withdraw their money as fast as possible. FDR put a stop to that by creating a national banking holiday from March 6th through March 9th, 1933. Fearing further bank runs on April 5th, 1933, just one month after taking office, Roosevelt used the powers granted to the president by the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917 to make Gold ownership illegal, both coins and bar. Folks were allowed to keep $100 worth of gold, which was around five ounces at the time. And there were some other exemptions for collectible coins, jewelry, and certain businesses. Most people had to turn in their gold or face $10,000 fine and 10 years in prison. That $10,000 in 1933 is roughly equivalent to 225,000 today adjusted for inflation. It's fairly steep penalties. Many folks today scoff at citizens following this dumb law, but you have to understand people saw it as their patriotic duty to help this country and people believe the government actually had their best interest at heart. I've often heard people try to make the argument that this wasn't really a gold confiscation. If the government has a policy of turn in this or else? That's a confiscation in my eyes. But I digress. Why did the United States government confiscate gold? It comes back to the gold standard. President Roosevelt wanted to print more fiat currency, but couldn't because the United States gold reserves weren't large enough. Every fiat dollar printed had to be backed by 40 cents of gold. Gold at this time was valued at $20.67 per ounce. In order to print more money, our gold reserves would need to grow. So the confiscation occurred. But that wasn't all. After the deadline to turn in your gold for paper currency, the value of gold was increased from $20.67 per ounce to $35 per ounce by the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. United States citizens were completely screwed over. They lost 41% value overnight. The U.S. government could have raised the gold value before demanding citizens turn it over, but they didn't. It was sneaky, it was shady, it was criminal, but it was all done under the guise of helping the country. The United States had a larger gold reserve, and now the gold value was much more, which allowed the Federal Reserve to print billions in fiat currency for public work initiatives. It's worth reminding the viewers, the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by private individuals and not part of the U.S. government. It is not federal and it holds no reserves. None of FDR's initiatives ended the Great Depression. In 1937, the stock market collapsed by 90% and unemployment soared. Gold remained banned for U.S. citizens to hold until 1974 
when Gerald Ford made an executive order decreeing so. The final nail in the coffin that is the United States economy occurred in 1971 when President Nixon took the United States off the gold standard entirely. Gold no longer backs our currency. It has enabled the Federal Reserve to print trillions in currency, making the dollar essentially worthless. Your time is your most precious asset, and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.